Hi again. Today we're looking at Mark 14, verses 32 to 42. That's Mark 14, verses 32 to 42. So Jesus, uh, having had the Lord's Supper and warned his disciples of their falling away, now goes to Gethsemane to pray. And he says, sit here while I pray. Uh, uh, he takes Peter, James and John along, a little bit along with him. And, we're, and we're, we see here something of the anguish which Jesus feels knowing what he's about to have happen. Uh, it's not as though Jesus went, he went willingly and because he loved us, but it was extraordinarily distressing for him to go through what he's about to go through. He, said, he, he tells them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He knows what he's about to experience is going to be more than any, um, more than any of us could bear. He says, stay here and keep watch. Echoing actually what he said back in Mark 13, keep watch, be on your guard, he said. Um, uh, and uh, he goes along a little farther and then, and then we're told he prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Uh, there's a very real sense in which Jesus does not want to go through with his crucifixion uh, and uh, his paying for our sins here. And uh, he's, uh, he wants this, he says, if possible, um, uh, uh, let, let, the, let this be the case. And he prays, Abba, Father. He prays to his heavenly Father. We see almost into the very life of God here. Everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Jesus knows that he's about to bear the sin of the world. He's about to um, bear the full wrath of his heavenly Father for, the, for all of our sin. That's what that cup is. It's a cup of wrath. And uh, he says... Let, he, he asked God, don't make me drink this. Don't let me, don't let me have to drink this. Um, but then he says these, what I think are great words, yet not what I will, but what you will. Jesus desperately wants not to go through with this, but he also wants to be obedient to his heavenly father. And so he says, not what I want, but what you want. And that is a great model for our prayer as well. Sometimes we desperately want things to happen and we pray earnestly for them. And sometimes God says no. And sometimes that will be hard for us, as it was hard, I'm sure, for Jesus to realise as well and to pray. But we need to entrust ourselves to a Heavenly Father and to know that He does what is best for us and to pray along with Jesus, not what we want, but what you want. Uh, knowing that what God wants for us is by far what is best and what he has planned. It was in God's plan for Jesus to die and Jesus knew that. And Jesus knew that's what he had to do and that's what, and because he loved us, that's what he did. But at the point, at, when it came to the point of uh, needing to go through that, in a sense, it's here at Gethsemane where we see Jesus' anguish far more than we do later on. Um, we see Jesus in a garden say, not what I want, but what you want. It's not hard. It's, it's possible to reflect upon another man in a garden right at the beginning of creation who said to God, in, not, in, in, in as many words, not what you want, God, but what I want. And because of Adam and Eve's sin, uh, we... Uh, we are, uh, we are in this broken world and we sin ourselves. But Jesus, unlike Adam, says, not what, you, not what I want, but what you want. Notice he comes back to his disciples who've fallen asleep. He's specifically told them, watch and pray. He's warned them in that Mark 13, watch and pray. But, uh, uh, and, and, he, and he says, watch and pray so they don't fall into temptation. He's told them they're going to fall away. Um, and now he said, watch and pray, keep on your guard. And, and that they can't do it. He says, the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Um, he goes and prays again, the same thing. Not what he go, he go, and then he goes and prays a third time. Their, their eyes are heavy. They're asleep each time. Are you still sleeping and resting? It's almost as though in, the, in this prayer time in Gethsemane, that's almost when the decision is made. That's after that, he knows what he's going to do and he is determined to go through with it. It's at this point when... Perhaps there was a temptation to not go through with it. He certainly had the power to do it. He could have called down legions of angels. He 
was not sinful himself. He did not need to pay for his own sin. He was paying for the sins of others. It's almost as though that's the point where he was tempted. That's the point we wanted his disciples to pray for him. Watch and pray. So there's no temptation. Um, he was tempted earlier in his ministry, but this now is, in a sense, the temptation at the very point he in when it's most tempting to, to pull out because of the pain and the wrath he's about to bear. He comes back a third time and he says, no, we're doing this. The hour has come. I'm about to be betrayed. Here comes my betrayer. And from this point on, um, in God's plan, things go as Jesus knows they're going to happen, almost inexorably, until we get to his crucifixion. But it was at that moment, not what I want, but what you want, when Jesus obeyed his heavenly Father and went to the cross for us. Let me pray for that. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Jesus' death for us, that he, even though it was not what he wanted, even though he prayed, if there's any way for this not to happen, let, let this cup pass from me. Thank you that he instead chose to obey you and resist that temptation to, uh, to, to leave this behind. Thank you that he did what you want and he uh, went to his death for us. Father, please help us as we pray in all the difficulties of our life, to pray along with Jesus, not what I want, but what you want. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you next time.